During the Progressive Era, several pieces of progressive legislation and amendments were enacted at the federal level. The goal of these reforms was to address several economic, political, and social problems, as well as protecting the welfare of citizens. President Theodore Roosevelt set the standard for progressive presidents. Early in his presidency, Roosevelt demonstrated he would be a progressive president when he intervened in the anthracite coal strike in 1902. Unlike earlier presidents, though, Roosevelt helped the striking workers get better conditions. Roosevelt added to his progressive reputation when he applied the Sherman Antitrust Act to break up monopolies. In 1903, the federal government sued J.P. Morgan's Northern Securities Corporation to stop Morgan's attempt to monopolize the railroad industry. The federal government won the case and Teddy Roosevelt became known as the Trust Buster. Roosevelt responded to the public outcry after Upton Sinclair's publication of The Jungle in 1906. That year, he urged Congress to improve consumer safety by passing both the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act. Another area of progressive reform Roosevelt championed was in the area of environmental conservation. In 1906, Roosevelt signed the Antiquities Act, which gave the president the authority to set aside public land as protected national parks. After Teddy Roosevelt, Presidents William Howard Taft and Woodrow Wilson continued the progressive legacy. President William Howard Taft pushed for the creation of the Department of Labor to address workplace issues. Although it was Roosevelt who was known as the trust buster, Taft actually filed twice as many antitrust suits as TR. Taft also expanded environmental conservation efforts begun under Roosevelt. And in 1912, Taft created the Children's Bureau to promote and protect the welfare of America's children. The Children's Bureau oversaw the conditions in orphanages and tried to reduce the practice of child labor. Woodrow Wilson became president in 1913 and implemented even more progressive reforms. One of his biggest was the creation of the Federal Reserve System in 1913. The Federal Reserve was created to oversee the nation's banking and financial industry as well as stabilize the nation's system of currency. In 1914, the Federal Trade Commission was established for the purpose of monitoring and preventing any illegal business activities. Also in 1914, Congress passed the Clayton Antitrust Act, which attempted to strengthen the federal government's existing antitrust laws. Unlike the Sherman Antitrust Act, this one could not be used to weaken labor unions. Wilson also signed the Child Labor Act in 1916. This act outlawed the interstate commerce of any goods produced by child laborers, and the Adamson Act, which established an eight-hour workday for the American railroad worker. Between 1913 and 1920, four constitutional amendments were ratified. In 1913, the 16th Amendment created the graduated income tax, which reformers felt was a fairer way to tax citizens based on their income. Prior to this, the government relied on excise taxes and tariffs, both of which had the effect of raising the price of goods, which is a burden that falls heaviest on those with lower incomes. Also in 1913, the 17th Amendment was ratified to provide for the direct election of senators by the people. The original Constitution stated that state legislators were the ones who chose who would represent their state in the federal Senate. This did not strike progressive-minded people as a very democratic process. Reformers hoped that direct election of senators would be a more democratic practice. To combat the public health effects of alcohol consumption, the 18th Amendment was ratified in 1920. The 18th Amendment prohibited the sale and consumption of alcohol. This amendment proved to cause more harm than good, as we'll discuss when we get to the 1920s. Eventually, it was repealed with the ratification of the 21st Amendment in 1933. And in 1920, 67 years after the Seneca Falls Convention and the publication of the Declaration of Sentiments, thanks to the tireless efforts of reformers such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, and Lucretia Ma, women across the country were guaranteed the right to vote with the ratification of the 19th Amendment. In summary, the entire progressive era can be captured in two words, and those words are reform and regulation. Progressive reformers targeted the social, political, and economic inequalities made apparent during the industrial and corporate age. Muckraking journalists informed the public of unsanitary conditions, poverty, and government corruption. The public outcry led to a number of regulations covering a wide array of issues, including the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act, Antiquities Act, the 16th, 17th, and 19th Amendments, and the Federal Reserve Act. 
However, the enthusiasm for progressive reforms began to fade as America became involved in World War I.